Hi Kristen, so here is the video of basically the lesson today. Um, first of all, here is a printable PDF of the note packet that we use in class. Um, it is optional to print that note packet, but I will show you what out of the note packet we covered today in the event that you decide to print it. Um, so here is the first page and then we covered this page, History of the Atomic Theory, where we talked about each of these scientists, um, and I will go over that with you in just a second. Then we filled out this, which is um, the Google Slide activity posted in Canvas, which I'll show you as well. And then finally, I did a separate um, thing that is located right here nuclide symbols lecture PDF and so that was the second thing that I did and if we open that it looks like this and so I will uh, go over so that's there as well um, and I'll go through each one of these one more time in this video for you so first history of the atom lecture and when I open this link on canvas it brings me to here um, and so you can watch the video. However, what I'm going to do is kind of go over the highlights with you right here. So in the smart notebook <clears throat> that I use in class, who came up with the idea of the atom? Well, it's many scientists over a long period of time. Democritus is the first guy. He says that atoms are indivisible and indestructible. Basically, he just thought up the idea of the atom. Then there's John Dalton, and this one is important because he came up with one, two, three, four theories, but only two of them were totally accurate. These two, number one and number two, were not totally accurate, and you need to know why. All elements are made of indivisible atoms. They are divisible into subatomic particles, electrons, neutrons, and protons, and so this is not a totally accurate statement that Dalton came up with. His second statement that all elements that are the same are identical. The atoms are identical. That is not totally true because you could have a whole bunch of atoms that are the same, but they might have different masses. So you could have a carbon that has a mass of 14. You can have a carbon that has a mass of 13. And you can have a carbon that has a mass of 12. Sorry, that's my magic pen and I didn't even realize it. They're just a disappearing. So you can have different atoms, but they're just not going to be totally identical because their masses would be different. So that makes this one a not completely accurate statement. So two of his four are not totally accurate. You need to know about that on your test. Which ones are not accurate and why they're not accurate. Okay, then we have J.J. Thompson. He comes up with the plum pudding model. Basically said that there are electrons in within a big giant positive material. He used something called the cathode ray experiment, cathode ray tube. So you can watch a video about that. Um, well, I guess you can't <laughs> unless because you can't click on the link. Um, but you really don't have to watch a video about the cathode ray, ray tube. You just need to know he is the one who came up with the plum pudding model um, that positive electric. So he discovered electrons. So let's just say that he discovered electrons and that's going to do that. <laughs> OK, um, so next is important is Rutherford and he does what's called the gold, gold foil experiment um, and you can uh, Google gold foil experiment and kind of see it if you really want. But what's really important is that he discovers that the nucleus is a dense positive center. So it's a dense center. <coughs> it's also positive and it's called the nucleus. That is what Rutherford discovers, the dense positive nucleus using the gold foil experiment. So kind of get those wrapped in your mind. Okay, so here's a picture of gold, his gold foil experiment, um, but we won't really go into detail about that. These two guys just focused on where are the electrons and how are they moving, but we're going to have a whole unit on them next unit, so don't worry about them right now. Okay, so here's kind of a summation of uh, all the different models, starting with a hard sphere, continuing with a hard sphere, and then plum pudding, followed by Rutherford's found the nucleus, followed by, hey, the electrons are moving like planets around the sun, followed by, no, the electrons are actually scattered throughout in probable locations. 
Okay, so um, you should know which of the four statements of Dalton's atomic theory are incorrect and how we know, and we discussed that already. So now you need to fill in this chart on Canvas. So when you go to hit Next, it brings you to this LTI atomic structure table and Venn diagram. And when you open that into a new link, it brings you to this. Um, you can watch the instructions if you want. Um, and it's going to just tell you to fill in the information on here and then complete the diagram by dragging these to where they belong. So, um, here is the information in the table. The atom is the smallest particle of an element that keeps the properties of that element. Atoms are made up of subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. You should know the mass, charge, and location of each. Protons and neutrons both have a mass of 1 AMU, and they are both inside the nucleus. They are only different by their charge. Protons have a positive charge, and neutrons have no charge. They are neutral. Then there's the electrons, which are outside the nucleus in an electron cloud. They have a really tiny mass compared to protons and neutrons, 0 0.0006 AMU. Um, AMU stands for atomic mass unit, just basically means weight. And then the charge of an electron is negative 1. Then you should be able to label this diagram, and these guys out here are the electrons. And then these right here are the neutrons, and these right here are the protons, positive, neutral, negative. And then this whole thing is the nucleus. Okay, then you are asked to fill in the Venn diagram, which the one I gave you on the Google slide is better. It has protons, neutrons, and electrons already labeled for you. And then you drag each of these to where they belong based on the notes you just wrote down on this chart. Okay, after that, we went over the, excuse me, we finished this and went to next. And then we did this, history of the atom, check for understanding. And um, in that big note packet, if we scroll to the very end, sorry for the whiplash, when we get to here, we get to what's called the homework packet, which this pretty much matches what is posted in Canvas. Um, so here are these uh, six matchings. And so we basically said that... Um, the teacher in ancient Greece is Democritus, and that came up with the four-part theory is Dalton. Um, Describe the atom with the plum pudding model is Thompson. Did a gold foil experiment is Rutherford. Electrons orbit like planets around the sun is Bohr, and electrons found in energy levels around the nucleus is the wave model. And that would be the answers to those checks for understanding. Once you submit that, then we moved on to this last thing, which is the nuclide symbol lecture, um, which is this paper right here. So I'll go over each of these with you now. You also need a periodic table, and you can get a periodic table by Googling, so do a Google search, um, star chemistry periodic table. Um, reference materials is also fine too, but you just need the periodic table. And just about any of these, I mean this one right here is good, and that's all the reference materials. It's good to print out and have because these are what you're allowed to use on every single test if you want them. Um, and so here is the periodic table that we can use during this activity. So now I'm going to kind of go over these things on the smart notebook. So the basics to remember were that um, electrons are represented with an E negative, protons a P positive, and neutrons an N zero. If you ha are writing the symbol to represent an element, first you have the symbol of the element here in position X. Down here, the bottom left of the element, we have the atomic number, which represents the number of protons. At the top left of the element, we have the mass number, which represents protons plus neutrons together. Sorry, I'm writing with my mouse. Um, so, for example, if I had this element, this would go in position X. So I would write Mg right here. This is the atomic number, so it would go at the bottom left. And it's telling me the number of protons that magnesium has, 12 protons. Um, then 
I have 12 protons. I would need to know how many neutrons I have in order to get the mass number, which goes here at the top left. So if I had, say, 12 neutrons, then add those together, and I would have a mass number of 24, and that's what would go up here. Um, so if we look at this example, we are missing this number right here, which is the atomic number. But the good news is we can go and find it by looking on the periodic table and finding that symbol SI, which is silicon, and it's right there. So notice there is the atomic number, 14. So I'm going to write that number here. And so over here, we know the atomic number is 14 which means we also know how many protons there are. There are 14 protons. Now, this number up here, 27, is my mass number. And because the mass number are the protons and the neutrons combined, and this number is just protons on their own, then if I were to subtract 27 minus 14, I would get the number of neutrons because I'm subtracting the protons out of this number to have just the neutrons. So there are 13 neutrons in this silicon. So I'm going to put 13 for the neutrons over here. And then finally, we look for what is the charge. And if we look over here, charge, the charge is located at the top right of the symbol. Since there's nothing here, this charge is zero it's neutral. There is no charge. And the fact that it's neutral means that our protons and our electrons are equal to each other. So since those are equal to each other, since I have 14 protons, I must also have 14 electrons. Um, for the record, pro protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. And if you add on your calculator a positive 14 plus a negative 14, you should get zero. But because this is zero, we have nothing at the top right. In this location, there's nothing because it's neutral and zero. Okay, then another example we did was this one where we have um, the atomic number is here, 15, which tells us we have 15 protons. The mass number is here, 31, which tells us that if I subtract 31 minus 15, I get the neutrons, and so neutrons are going to be 16. Next is the charge. This is the charge right here. It's a negative 3. Negative is important if it's negative or positive. And then to figure out how many electrons they have, we're going to take this atomic number, which is 15, and then we're going to not subtract 3. We're going to do the opposite of the charge. We're going to add 3. And that is going to equal 18. And that's how many electrons we have. This should make sense because if I have a positive 15 and a negative 18, because protons are positive, electrons are negative, if you type in your calculator positive 15 plus negative 18, you're going to get negative 3 as the answer to that. And so these are all the things you can get from this symbol of the element. Okay, another one we did is this one. First of all, I'm missing this number down here. So I want to go to the periodic table and find it. And SR is there, has an atomic number of 38. So I'm going to write the atomic number here. So the atomic number is 38. And that means I have 38 protons. The mass number is this number here, 86. To get the number of neutrons, I will do 86 minus 38, which gives me 86 minus 38, gives me 48. So I have 48 neutrons after I subtract those two things. Okay, the charge is here, is a positive 2. And then to get the number of electrons, we take this atomic number and the charge, and we're going to say 38. Do the opposite of the charge. It's a positive 2 charge, so I'm going to do 38 minus 2, and that's going to equal 36 electrons. 
Mathematically, this should make sense because I have a positive 38 and a negative 36. If you type in your calculator positive 38 plus negative 36, you're going to get this plus 2 charge overall. Okay, so now we're going to do the reverse. If I had this information, sorry. Okay, if we had this information, we could do the reverse. So first of all, what element is this? Well, protons identify the element. So I want to go find atomic number 50 on the periodic table, which is here. Atomic number 50 is there, and that is Sn or 10. So I'm going to write Sn as my symbol. And then the atomic number, which is my number of protons, goes at the bottom left of the symbol. Up here is the mass number, and the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. So if I add 50 plus 68, I get 118, and so that is my mass number. It goes at the top left of my symbol. And the last thing is, what is the charge? And to get the charge, you compare protons and electrons. So since they are equal, and it's like this, positive 50 plus negative 50 is going to give you zero. So we're going to have nothing here because this is a neutral atom. And so this right here would be the symbol. Okay, what if I had one like this? So a key word here is ion. If you see the word ion, it has a charge. Um, an atom is neutral, but an ion has a charge. So first, what element is this? I'm going to go look up the protons, 27 protons, on the periodic table, which is far away. There it is. Okay, 27 is going to be CO, which is cobalt. So my symbol is CO. 27 is the atomic number that goes at the bottom left. And now what number goes up here? That is my mass number, which is going to be my protons plus my neutrons, which is going to equal 61. Finally, what is my charge going to be? Um, and to do the charge, we got to compare protons. We have a positive 27 and electrons, which gives me a negative 25. So if I type in my calculator positive 27 plus negative 25, I'm going to have a charge overall of plus 2. And so my answer is this right here. This is the symbol for this element. Okay, um, last one, and then we're all done. So if I were to go look up 35 protons on the periodic table, I'm going to come up with this. And the atomic number is 35, so that goes at the bottom left over here. I'm going to add protons plus neutrons to get my mass number of 80, which goes here. And then finally, I'm going to compare my electrons and my protons to get my charge. We have a positive 35 protons and a negative 36 electrons. So overall, plus 35 plus negative 36 equals a negative 1 charge for bromine. And so this would be the symbol for this element. Okay, I hope this 18-minute summary does the job for you. Let me know if you have any questions.